Alright folks, welcome back to the Aviozil Presents Precious Metals Recovery and in this video I'm going to be talking about hard drives. Now, what are the hard drives, what's inside them and what's good to put aside as far as precious metal recovery goes. So if you take a look, you're going to have on the hard drive itself these cards. Now these cards are being sold for more than motherboards themselves they're highly populated with precious metals uh, especially little pieces of platinum you won't find much gold but there is a lot of uh, platinum the monolithic capacitors if I can show you here on the side so those are some gold pins um, if I'm gonna get into the light here you're gonna see all those little gray things those are the uh, monolithic capacitors that are filled with beautiful platinum and palladium you're gonna collect those inside these little integrated circuit chips there is gold as well you put those aside so you pry them off and those are some tantalum capacitors you have a tantalum there you have one there and you got a nice big one over there okay let me just fix my light here so we can see a little better okay so let's go through the other cards um, basically uh, let's take this light off maybe we can see better now okay so let's look at this card right here um, we have tantalum capacitor there we got some gold on the edge we got these three cards another tantalum capacitor up there remember tantalum capacitors are a very rare precious metal that's going for about eighty dollars a pound um, they're very hard to make and they're going to be worth some money later on we'll put this aside and show you the next one okay now they did have some gold pins on the end I already took them off but if you want to see what one looks like that has the pins of course that's what connects the power and the cable the IDE cable to the hard drive so you're gonna take this off you can see some gold pins now these are gold plated pins but you do need a, a lot of them don't think you're gonna just get rich rich by by taking these pins and uh, and melting them but but after a while of doing this you're gonna have a uh, significant collection and with the chemical processes that are available to remove the gold you can get some considerable um, gold from that so if you see here those are more monolithic capacitors and they contain platinum and palladium if I can get you a close look so you wanna take those off put them aside there's three there there's four there another two over there and if you look around the board you can see gold those little dots those are gold so this card will get dipped into a chemical solution afterwards in order to remove the trace gold amounts and here are more beautiful IC chips which are integrated circuit chips so these all have gold wires inside of them so you take those out pry them off and you get the gold we're on the hunt what else we got let's put that away okay this one I haven't showed you yet this is another one so these are different hard drives from different years, different makes, different models that have different um, metals inside of them. And of course, this card is very precious. This, this is the highest paid card actually going, more than motherboards. Because motherboards have a larger surface area, these are smaller, so they tend to densely populate uh, the board. If you can see, there's some gold right there see the gold so I recover the actual gold on the boards themselves by dipping this into hydrochloric acid see the gold over there that's some nice gold so I, I dip I dip it in and these this is a copper the green stuff is copper so all this is fused onto copper and then they put the little transistors and capacitors and integrated circuit chips on top of the copper because as we know copper is a conductor of electricity but we can't afford to use gold or silver throughout the whole entire computer so we use copper which is a lower conductor and then for the smaller parts we're gonna use silver and gold for the most sensitive um, pieces such as the pins connecting the connector edges such as the chips so on and so forth and inside you're actually you can see those lines those lines are gold lines that connect that are like pathways they're like lanes so the data is being traveled through these lanes so it's on copper but the main stuff that is used for example here you have a ribbon 
this is a uh, there's gold in the ribbon so these are gold um, lines that are inside here and if extracted properly with the right way you can get the gold onto the hard drive itself so you can tell these are the platters now these platters right here hi guys there I am and it's pretty hard holding the camera with uh, one hand doing this with the next but I, I intend to get a tripod and do this on a more professional level as I go along on my precious metal hunt but this is a platinum plated platter how's that for a tongue twister platinum plated platter can you say that three times fast folks platinum plated platter platinum plated platter platinum plated platter now remember this is not pure platinum it's plated on aluminum so this is aluminum and there's a thin coating of platinum on top of it don't think you're gonna get rich just with one of them it's not gonna be the case but if you put them aside and stack them and learn how to chemically extract the platinum from them you will get your cash now let's open up these bad boys and see what we got this is either tin or aluminum or stainless steel but in this case it's not stainless steel um, it's most likely aluminum and there's some of them are made of tin the lower grade ones put that aside so when you open up the hard drive let's just open them all up so we can see what we're dealing with put all these drives together okay now just for your information guys if you ever have a hard drive that goes bad and you want to recover the information if you get two identical hard drives and you can actually take the platter off of one drive and you can place it into the next drive so sometimes these reader heads go bad for whatever reason because they move back and forth all the time constantly it's uh, easily um, doable to very carefully take two identical hard drives and you can pretty much swap one for the other so you remove the screws and then you take off the platter and then you can take this platter and put it into the next hard drive and pretty much recover your data okay so you can finally take them out now I took all the screws off already so this is like I said platinum so the information is stored on this disc it's a little bit thicker than a CD or a DVD and it is platinum coated okay for other purposes that we don't need to get into right now this is a p nice piece of aluminum and you can see there's some gold and then that's probably silver with a little bit of tin silver solder underneath here we're gonna oops we're gonna probably have some uh, some copper if you want to pry that open to turn this motor this is a very nice piece of aluminum so that's worth money this is very well done aluminum okay this is um, machine cast aluminum so these are very very nice the probably the reason they use that is supposed to stainless steel is because of these magnets now I mentioned about neodymium magnets these magnets are really really powerful to get into it shortly without having a whole spiel about why they use magnets in hard drives you're probably all wondering well I heard that magnets can take the information off of a hard drive so why do they even put them in the hard drives well it's very simple to basically tell you why let me show you this magnet right here as I pried one off this is the neodymium magnet it's the strongest magnet in the earth it's a rare earth magnet so it's not your regular home hardware home depot magnet it has a very special unique property uh, as I mentioned with my other video about testing silver bullion but basically this magnet creates a magnetic force so I'll show you one that looks together and there's one inside there there's actually two so there's two magnets that are put together and then they have this plate right here which is made of a perma alloy this plate is made of boron and iron and what this does is create an anti-magnetic field so the reason the magnets are used are in order to stimulate this right there now that's the read and write head so this has to go back and forth at very high speeds and in order for this to go back and forth at really high speeds they put this magnet in between it and what happens is a signal gets sent from the read and write head from the connector right over here from your computer and that basically tells the read and write head 
how much or where it has to get the data from. So in order for this to go back and forth at really, really high rates, there's a copper coil right there. The copper coil generates a little bit of energy and basically the magnetic field is created from the copper. So it sends a signal from your computer through there, through the ribbon, and the copper creates a little bit of energy that creates a magnetic field that's only allowed through these neodymium magnets and this magnetic field is so powerful that it actually can move this back and forth at really high rate so this goes this is flying back and forth while this is spinning at the same time spin that and move that and that gets your data and you can tell there are probably there are two plates in here so you have the read and write head fetching the data really quickly and on the edges you have this perma alloy which prevents the magnetic field from affecting the hard drive itself so it's kind of like an oxymoron here because you have the magnet which actually can destroy the hard drive's contents but it's actually needed in order to get the contents off of the hard drive so that's pretty cool you know you got the magnet here and that's put in there and that creates a very very nice magnetic field from the copper coil that's sent from the computer through this which tells the read and write head at the precise amount it needs to find the information so it's going back and forth at really high speeds while that's spinning and it all happens really quickly and all it's getting is zeros and ones that go through here to your computer so there's a really intricate process uh, it's a science and it's fascinating how you know we've uh, thought about the very cool ways so the computer is more complex than you think all right now these read and write heads let's get into what's valuable here there is some gold on the ends of them if you can if you can see there I don't know if we can focus but there is some gold you want to pry the gold off the ends these heads themselves they're made of aluminum so you put the aluminum aside you can see there's a little bit of gold right there so you want to take that gold and put it aside okay so you got some nice gold that's being attached on the edges as well once you get your gold off you put the aluminum aside you take the copper out put the copper aside and then the plastic fitting here you take and throw out you don't want to hoard plastic for other reasons don't be a plastic hoarder guys this is only precious metals and semi-precious metals okay you only want to keep your gold your platinum palladium silver and the semi-precious metals such as copper and aluminum stainless steel i also keep in a in a huge container and um you know i get that from the computer cases and, uh, and other stuff that is worth money too so no need to throw your steel out and make a mess of of uh of the backyard and and whatnot so keep these stuff properly contained in the proper cases for the proper either uh, you want to cash it in personally what I'm doing is I'm melting my aluminum I'm melting the copper I'm melting all the gold and silver and the platinum so I'm melting them into ingots into fine little bars that I'm gonna be keeping for my own personal investment so this stuff here I'm really not cashing out uh, I do web development and web design you know some uh, SEO internet marketing um, I make my money through that so this is just a, uh, a side hobby um, on any computers you know I have some uh, some computer stores that I know they give me uh, computers that don't work and I take those computers from them and pretty much open them up and recover the uh, the precious metals so if you wanna get an idea of how to start this business as a side project or a, a very interesting way to make um, some money you can go to the computer stores in your local area and, and tell them that you would like to buy off them whatever broken parts or defective um, computers that don't work and then you can pretty much open them up and recover the precious metals from them on your own time I don't recommend doing this as a full-time thing because it, 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 it is uh, time-consuming if you don't have the proper machinery and equipment to you know do this on a large grander scale uh, it's not um, you know cost effective as far as making a living goes unless you have the right equipment and you can do it on that scale 
but I do recommend don't quit your day jobs to come recover the precious metals yet because I don't want to get any emails asking me why I'm not making a living doing this. So it is very fun. It's very interesting. These are pretty much informative tutorials teaching you guys, you know, the information and the precious metal content within all these computer pieces and electronics. But by no means am I encouraging anybody to go out there and start this as their way of making a full-time living okay so with that said let's continue on here now we got the platters so we got the aluminum this is more aluminum I'll take this apart I'll show you I showed you what the head looks like okay I showed you what those aluminum plates look like I described what the cards are okay let's open up now let's describe the tools you'll need to do this you got here a Torx screwdriver. So in order to remove the actual screws, you're gonna need to use this screwdriver. Don't start sitting there with your hammer and trying to break this open because you're not gonna do it. Those Torx screws are a lot stronger than regular screws because of their cool design. Another thing, another piece of advice, you're gonna have to find these little holes and scratch them off. Otherwise, you're not gonna find the screw hole points. Okay, so don't sit there and wonder why isn't my hard drive case not opening. You're going to have to scratch the actual label and you're going to find these little holes. They hide them. Okay, so don't think that uh, something's, some, something's wrong. You're going to have to actually hunt down where those little holes are. And each, each one is different. Some don't have them at all. Okay, but at the end of the day, you're going to want to make sure that you look for those holes and... Come on guys, it's not, not not that hard to find the hole. If you have some experience, you can get the hole uncovered and on the way. So what we're gonna do is show you what else we need. We're gonna need a chisel. This is a stainless steel chisel, which is very sharp at the end, which allows you to pry open the different surfaces and to get those pieces without hurting yourself or the machinery either this is a smaller chisel okay this is a smaller wooden chisel with a stainless steel tip this is smaller so you can get to the harder to reach areas and if I can show you here let's open this up ah, it's really hard to do this while holding the camera at the same time maybe if I flip it there you go so I wanted to show you what we got here okay so there's the platter so when you open up, you're going to get your platter. Remember, you're going to be unscrewing this. So don't think you're going to open the hard drive and everything is just going to fall out into your hands. It's not that easy. But you're going to first take this, unscrew it, put it aside. And this is a Mac Store hard drive, which was a little bit different. So it had different design. The basic elements, like I've gone through already in the video, here's your hard drive head, the reader head. You got the ribbon over there and you got some gold on the ribbon as well some gold contacts over there and you're gonna have a little bit of gold on the end it's hard to see the actual ribbon piece sorry the actual head piece here is made of see the gold if you can see it you're gonna wanna get the gold first right always go for the gold and then you're gonna get the platinum and palladium after but then it's easier to kind of do it what makes sense so the next piece is the aluminum put that aside it's very nice high grade aluminum which is rising in value okay a little piece of gold and then the plastic of course you're gonna throw out then you got the copper so the copper here you're gonna put the copper aside as well the copper coils all right now the next pieces that are inside here you have this piece which is the spinning thing this is made of very nicely done aluminum as well Okay, so you put these aluminum pieces aside and on the bottom underneath you're gonna have some copper inside in there so before you put this aside as pure aluminum you want to pry that open to get to the copper that way you take that out and don't confuse things because copper is worth more than the aluminum all right aluminum is going up but these are really nicely done high casted high grade aluminum covers the reason they don't use stainless steel is because of the powerful magnets contained within these hard drives so if they use stainless steel then they're just going to be adding 
a little bit more complications. And as I mentioned, they use the magnet to retrieve the information off of the hard drive. They put the magnet right over here. These, this is what those bad boys look like. Okay, and this piece right here is the perma alloy, which is made of boron and iron, which is an anti-magnetic uh, property. So basically these magnets, which is the small ones, if you look at them, this is what they look like. Some are bigger, some are smaller, depending on the year of the hard drive. It's nickel plated, so the neodymium is very uh, corros um, it's it, it, can corro uh, it can corrode easily. So without it having to rust on you, they plate it with nickel, but the actual magnet itself it's kind of grayish looking. So these magnets are very powerful. You'll find them inside there. You pry this open and you get to your magnets and there you go. And remember you could use these magnets for testing silver. So they're very very useful. Um, it's also good to figure out what you have as far as stainless steel goes. So a good way to test for aluminum and steel is just by putting the magnet. Now I want to show you guys how, how cool these things are. They are very powerful and be careful. So you want to be able to not hurt yourself as I'm trying not to while holding the camera. But they are very powerful magnets indeed. Don't you love that sound? The sound of money. See they're these guys are just see that they're all stuck together now. And we got a big field of magnets. So that's what's inside the hard drive. All right. So let's recap. You got those heads. The heads contain a little copper, a little bit of gold on the edges. That piece of aluminum and the plastic those are the heads the magnets so you know how to get the magnets off put these perma alloy pieces aside they're worth more than copper actually some people buy them separately so don't scrap them don't throw them in your aluminum pile either okay put them in a separate pile as a perma alloy which is made of boron and iron which is hard to make and they have an anti-magnetic property so these perma alloy is 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 worth more because it has an anti-magnetic field that protects the actual hard drive platters from getting erased so it's an oxymoron the magnets are used to move this head back and forth at a very high rate in order to get the information off while at the same time the perma alloy that surrounds the magnets that are right here protect the hard drive itself from having the data erased so pretty cool science there guys how this all works and comes together these are the cases and the little pieces contained in them you got the aluminum okay pieces of aluminum high-grade aluminum put that aside for aluminum and then you got the platters themselves these platas are the platinum plated platters if you can say that quickly platinum plated platter they're thinly plated with platinum so we're not going to get rich just by getting a few of these but if you get a hundred or two hundred of them people are selling them on ebay for some money or if you're getting into the chemical extraction process as I am, you can actually dip this in a chemical bath and extract the platinum um, from these aluminum. But these are aluminum and it's platinum plated. So put them aside, but don't put them in your aluminum pile either because they are platinum based. And like I said before, you have these high grade boards. These high grade boards are being sold for more than motherboards they're highly dense um, boards they got lots of cool stuff you can see the gold over there we got gold 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 we got some gold pins right there and you got these monolithic capacitors which I already went through some tantalum capacitors you got the integrated circuit chips that contain gold wiring in them So first thing is you're going to take those off, right? And you get your cards, cut off your integrated circuit chips, you got the gold over there. And if you're like me, you're going to want to keep these to recover the gold off of it after. That gold is dipped into a chemical bath of muriatic acid mixed with hydrochloric acid mixed with hydrogen peroxide. 
which we're going to make something similar to aqua regia or you can stick this directly into nitric acid which is a little bit more dangerous flammable and uh, hazardous you want to be really careful with that stuff but if you can find it it's harder to get it's more expensive or you can take this stuff and dip it into the it's called copper chloride so go to Home Depot or Home Hardware buy yourself some muriatic acid which is a very uh, very uh, well used driveway cleaner cement cleaner you know a lot of people use that stuff to clean their, their cement driveways or whatever and it will extract the gold off of these boards and everything else okay so we're gonna do another video but you can see the gold on there so there's the gold see how nicely all these little dots that's all gold that's gold on the edges over there okay and inside the chips there's gold more gold over there and pretty much I leave the fun to you so there's lots to do and we can't forget the gold pins that are in the connector edges so these connecting edges I already took the other pins off the other boards I find that the best part those capacitors okay these are monolithic capacitors that have platinum and palladium in them okay so look for anything that looks like that the gray some are bigger some are smaller as always goes the case those are monolithic capacitors okay those have nice platinum and palladium in there as well as silver actually so these are very densely populated circuit boards and they got lots of valuable stuff on them if you take the time and you get a loop with a light you could actually look closely and to see what you got but if you take them one by one you'll find out all the goodies are right here these are sold for more than motherboards themselves because they're highly dense packed into a smaller area so per pound they go for a lot more you can just take all this stuff and stack it and sell it to a scrapper who will buy it off you for cash but for me, I get more en enjoyment out of getting down to the nitty gritty and extracting the actual goodies myself. And then I take them and keep them. That way you can pretty much, you know, have a nice collection of platinum, palladium, gold, silver, copper, aluminum. Melt them down into little ingot forms. And then you're going to have a bunch of different uh, pure bullion bars, ingots molds whatever you want to do with them mold them into uh, little shapes and whatnot but at the end of the day you're gonna have pretty much all the different precious and semi-precious metals and down the road they're gonna be very sought after a lot of different people are gonna be using them as the emergence of the computer world and electronic world continues to develop in in, more, in developing countries such as China and Africa a lot of people now are using the internet in Africa in places that they didn't even have a microwave you know in China and they're using all of these metals the demand and the supply is going up and so will the price as the supply and demand goes up the price goes up so your copper your aluminum and 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 all that stuff will go up as well so this is the video. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. It's Aviozio here on my Precious Metal video series giving you information about the hard drives and what to recover from them, how to recover it, what to look for, and a little explanation on how it all works. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to email me with any questions regarding this um, hard drive recovery, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care, guys.